band train pulled out of Ann Arbor on a cold and wintry morning, headed for California sunshine and the Rose Bowl football classic. On board the 16-car special were representatives of Buick, sponsors of the trip, faculty personnel, and 150 Michigan bandsmen. The train sped rapidly westward into the warmth and sunshine of the Southwest. One stop was made on the way to parade at Albuquerque, New Mexico. After playing a few selections in front of the railroad station, the band paraded and performed along Albuquerque's main streets. After the parade, a box containing some hot Mexican, along with a key ring and an Indian good luck charm, was given each bandsman by first of many souvenirs to be gathered on this 10-day tour of the West. Back on the train, the band members spent most of their time gazing at the snow-capped Rocky Mountains and basking in the southwest sunlight. Another beautiful day greeted the band as it arrived in Pasadena, California the following afternoon. A crowd of more than 2,000 people gathered to see and hear the nationally famous musical organization. In the parade that followed, the Californians were treated to the quick step and stirring music that earned the Michigan band the title of Best in the Land. On all street parades, the famed conductor of the University of Michigan band, Professor William D. Ravelli, marched with the men. After the parade to the city hall and a short concert there, the band members boarded chartered buses which carried them to their home while in California, Occidental College. All in for pregame, barked assistant conductor Jack K. Lee early the next morning as a long day of practice began. The Rose Bowl pregame and halftime shows had been planned on paper. Now they had to be worked out in practice. The drummers worked vigorously, providing the beat which kept the band in step. Dance numbers such as this one to the tune of Some Enchanted Evening were perfected. The bandsmen had to work fast, only three days left before New Year's Day and the Rose Bowl game. Precision marching, done in an atomic bomb sequence, was checked by the drum major and twirlers as well as by the band conductors. Another number which took a lot of practice was a wooden soldier's routine. They were all repeated again and again to get them working smoothly. That afternoon, the bandsmen donned their uniforms and boarded buses for the Rose Bowl Stadium and the annual kickoff luncheon. The spacious and picturesque campus at Occidental College was located just outside of Pasadena. Two dormitories vacated for the Christmas holidays by the students provided accommodations for the band. The annual kickoff luncheon was moved out of doors this year so more people could attend, and the occasion gave the Michigan bandsmen their first look at the field where they would later perform on New Year's Day. Professor Ravelli conducted the band and led the crowd in some local California songs. Among the celebrities at the luncheon were the presidents of both universities, Drs. Alexander Ruthven and Robert Sproul. Head coaches Lynn Waldorf and Benny Usterbahn were there, as was the queen of the Tournament of Roses, Eleanor Payne. Red Barber, famous sportscaster, interviewed Michigan's athletic director, Fritz Chrysler. After a box lunch at the stadium, the bandsmen marched out and took one last look. The next time they would see that field would be three days later at the Rose Bowl game. Late the following afternoon, after another day of practice, the band paraded to the Michigan headquarters in downtown Los Angeles to give the West Coast alumni and friends a look at the famous marching group. Early the next morning, assistant conductor Jack Lee started the band working again. This was the last day of practice. Tomorrow was the Tournament of Roses parade, the game, and the big show. Now was the time to get the small details straight. The major work had been accomplished, but now the fine points had to be perfect. The little things that would make the difference between a good show and a great one. Position of instruments, marching steps, everything had to be just right. The band worked hard and long, and after practice that day, they were a weary group. Rest and relaxation was the byword that night. Then came New Year's Day, and 
the show everyone had been pointing for. The long day started early in the morning with the Tournament of Roses Parade. For the majority of people, it meant a spectacle of beauty and wonder. For the Michigan band, it meant a seven-mile march in the parade before the Rose Bowl show. More than a million people lined the streets to watch the band and the spectacular pageantry. At the end of the parade, the bandsmen were able to witness some of the floral beauty and breathtaking floats before going to the Rose Bowl. First was the Queen's float, with the Queen in the royal chair and her six princesses seated below. The Michigan bandsmen also got a look at their friendly competitors for the afternoon, the University of California band. Then came more floats. the parade, the Rose Bowl. The Michigan band marched on the field for the pregame performance. This was it. This was the big show. Gentlemen, be seated. The Michigan Minstrels now present Sliding Sam, featuring the trombone section.
Thursday, April showers in tribute to Mr. Show Business, the late Al Jolson. show wouldn't be complete without a grand chorus to Alexander's Ragtime Band. what you've been waiting and pointing for, the halftime show. Quite a mystery, but the Michigan band figured it out.
There's no need to be spellbound anymore. The thing is Christmas presents for everyone. Christmas favorite, a toy electric train. <laughs> <laughs> 